In this week's Technique Tuesday video, I'll demonstrate three methods of reducing or eliminating twist loss in the tail of your long tail cast on. In the first few minutes, I'll be explaining how and why this twist loss can happen. So if you'd like to jump right to the demonstrations, tap or mouse over the video playback screen to find the chapter titles of each section, which allow you to find the section starting points or you can use the timestamp links down in the video description. A common problem with the long tail cast on is losing twist in the yarn tail as you cast on. This is true whether you hold both strands in the left hand or if you hold one yarn in each hand like this. Twist loss occurs when you use yarns with an S ply. An S ply yarn twists two or more strands together so that the twist angle is to the left. Now, other yarns are constructed differently, so it's only S ply yarns that this happens with. So here is a selection of yarns that were constructed in different ways, and you can tell which ones are the S spun yarns because they have that S, that direction of the S. This one's a little almost horizontal, but it is still an S. This is a single with a Z twist, so that's not a problem. Uh, this is what's called a crepe yarn and it's spun differently. This is a chainette yarn. It's more like a, an I-cord. This is what's called a blow yarn. It's like a tube. Um, where fibers were blown into it, and this is a chenille. So none of these are a problem, but these are the S-ply yarns that are going to lose twist with the long tail cast on. When an S-ply yarn travels counterclockwise around the needle, like this, it gains twist. But when it travels clockwise, around the needle, it loses twist. When you do the long tail cast on, the tail forms a loop around the thumb, and as the tail is used to form the twisted loops of the cast on edge, the tail travels around the thumb in a clockwise direction, and that causes it to lose twist. When you knit this thumb loop with the needle and the working yarn, the working yarn is traveling around the needle counterclockwise. So this yarn that's forming the loops is gaining twist. So I'm going to show you three ways to minimize or prevent the twist loss in the yarn tail as you cast on using the long tail cast on. I'm going to start with the continental method with both strands in the left hand. So when you have both strands like this, don't keep a death grip on those strands. Just provide enough friction to keep them in place without um, making them, without losing all of your tension. So as you're casting on and pulling, uh, putting the new stitches on, just relax your fingers as you do that. And by relaxing your fingers, that's going to allow the yarn below where you're grasping it to move twist back up into that strand. So if this yarn is dangling below your hands and it's allowed to freely dangle, when you let your grip off of that, then that twist will want to move back up into that into that yarn. If your yarn tail is too long to just hang freely, then what you can do is form a butterfly with the tails. Starting with the end that's attached to the needle, you're going to wrap around your thumb and your pinky finger in a figure eight, like this. And you're going to keep doing that until you, uh, till you reach the last few inches of the yarn tail. And then you're going to wrap this, uh, use the tail to wrap around the center of that butterfly that you formed. So you wrap it around and then you just tuck it through here and then pull it like that. And so now you have this little butterfly that can dangle 
uh, from below the needle and will be able to twist freely. So you can, it's like a center pull ball, so you can just pull out and release more yarn as you need it as you're casting on. So that's the first tip is just be mindful of, of releasing tension on those held strands and in order to allow some more twist back up into that yarn. So that first method, it works exactly the same as if you have one yarn in each hand. It's just don't put a death grip on this strand as you're doing it. Relax your hold, form a butterfly out of the yarn tail if you need to. What you want to do is change how the yarn is going around this thumb so it's not going around clockwise and losing twist. So instead, bring your thumb around the outside of that loop like this so that it comes around the opposite direction. And now when, as you create stitches, it's going to be coming around counterclockwise and gaining twist. You have to create these stitches differently. You can't come through the front like you would normally because there's no twisted loop there. Instead, you have to come through the back like this. And then you grab your yarn and pull it back through. And then when your thumb comes out, you need to remember to come around the outside in order to tighten up that loop. That's some muscle memory you have to overcome. Uh, it can be done. It might take a few minutes to get used to it. Coming through, come around the outside like this. Now, if you hold the working yarn in your right hand, it's the same thing. You have to bring your thumb around this way, come through that back, knit it, come out and again bring your thumb around underneath in order to complete it. So what you'll see is here is here is the standard long tail cast on and those edge loops are angled up to the right and here's where I switched you'll see there's that hor a horizontal strand and after that you'll see that all of these strands are coming up to the left. So this is showing you that I have reversed the the type of the direction of the twist for uh, the edge of the long tail cast on. Third method is to, instead of creating loops around the thumb in either direction, instead you're going to create them around your index finger. And so you're going to switch the, you're going to use the tail around your index finger. And if you use the continental method, then you will have uh, the working yarn around your thumb. So you'd set up exactly like you would for a regular long tail cast on, only you have the tail over your index finger and you have the working yarn over your thumb. And what you're going to do is cast on purl wise using the index finger yarn. So you're going to come in from behind like this and then you are going to purl that loop. So this works, first of all, the tail yarn is coming around counterclockwise. So that's going to add twist. It's not going to remove twist from the tail yarn. And then as you grab the yarn for the purl and you're coming around underneath and around like this, again, it's going around the needle counterclockwise. So you're not losing twist there either. So I've done a whole video on how to cast on for purl like this, and I'll link that to the top. If you hold the yarn in your right hand for the long tail cast on, you may be used to casting on uh, purl wise, but using your thumb yarn, but you do not want to do that for this. <laughs> you want to use the, the thumb because if you use your thumb the way you would normally cast on for purl, you're still going to get that clockwise orientation around your thumb. So you need to have the yarn in front ready to purl, the working yarn in front ready to purl, and you need the yarn tail over your index finger so that the yarn connected to the needle is coming, is going right over the top of the index finger. And you're coming in from behind, and then you're going to purl that stitch, go back out that loop, and let it go. The result is that you get the bumpy side of the long tail cast on facing you. You get those purl bumps facing you. And so if you are knitting flat, that means you'll turn your work and you'll have the smooth side facing you for the first row of knitting. But you'll notice that you still have 
those angled up to the left edge stitches just like you do when you reverse the thumb. So if you were going to be working in the round, this may not be the best solution for you unless you turn the work, work across all of the stitches for one row and then join at the end of the row. That would be one possibility or it would just be to use this, this version right here where you are reversing how you're going around the thumb. You may not have previously noticed the twist loss while casting on, or you may have noticed it but not been concerned. That is a perfectly valid response. Knitters have been using S-plied yarn and the long tail cast on together for centuries without finding it necessary to change the cast on process in order to counteract the twist loss. My method has always been the one I demonstrated first, but some knitters are really bothered by the twist loss and might prefer one of the alternatives that adds twist instead. Every knitter is different and there are always multiple ways of getting to the same end point. If you have any comments or questions about today's video or suggestions for videos you'd like to see in the future, you can leave those down in the comments below or join the discussion in my Ravelry group, Rocks Rocks. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week.